What you guys just saw was the Great Hill Race. And the question was, which shape will hit the bottom first? What did that really depend on? What did you find? Yeah, it depends on where the mass is located, depending on which will get to the bottom first. Um, so if you wanted to do this as, as an AP Physics C problem, you could actually calculate the amount of time it's going to take in each of those cases for it to get to the bottom. How do you think you might want to do that, though? Like, what would you need to know in order to figure out how long it takes something to reach the bottom of a ramp? In general. Because you've done this problem before a million times. The angle, the distance, and the acceleration. Yeah, 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 probably the acceleration, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you knew the acceleration and you knew the distance, what's the initial velocity? Zero. 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 Could you figure out the time? How? Kinematics. Kinematics. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. That would give you a time, right? All right, and the VI would be how much? Zero. So. D equals one-half AT squared, solve for time. Time comes out to be something like square root of 2 AD, right? Yeah. All right. That would be how we figure out the answer. What's the only thing in that that we just don't know? You don't know the acceleration. So the whole point of what we're about to tell you is to figure out how quickly each of those different shapes should accelerate when you let them go. Does that make sense? Okay, so here we go. <coughs> there are two separate ways to figure out what the acceleration ought to be. One is the parallel axis theorem method, which is the easy way, and the other one is a force balance method, which is difficult. So we're going to do it two different ways, and then we're going to compare them. Hopefully they come up with the same answer. You guys ready? Yes. Here we go. Parallel axis theorem method. Let's say you had an object. Which object do you want to pick? The hoop. Okay, good. So you've got a hoop. The hoop looks shockingly like this. Right? And you put it on a hill. About what axis will it rotate? One straight through the center. Parallel. Is it rotating about an axis about its center? Oh, no, it it's, on it's on the edge. It's on the edge. Sure. Or, or is it actually uh, rotating about the edge? Okay, who says, who says that the hoop is going to rotate about its center of mass? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Who says that the, the, the hoop is actually going to rotate about a point on its edge? Raise your hand. Who says, I'm confused, because isn't it kind of both? Yeah. Woo! Ha! Yes! No. Yes! Don't say that first, please. All right. The answer is always C. Haven't you learned anything in this class? The answer is always C. I swear you guys asked this like a hundred questions. So, the test. And then the last question is the actual one. So, so here's the deal. And, and I, you might have missed this the last time we did this because it was probably about a week and a half ago or two weeks ago now before Thanksgiving. Um, I kind of mentioned once or twice that um, any object that's rotating, you can actually pick the axis that it's rotating about. Yep. Yep. If something is spinning in the air, like this, <laughs> like that, which axis is it rotating about? The, you get to All of them. Got it? You could say, well, it's rotating like this about the center, and the center is moving, moving in a straight line. Or you could say, it's rotating about the edge, and the edge is moving in a cycloid translating in a cycloidal pattern, right? 
The point is you get to pick the axis of rotation, just like you did with static equilibrium problems. <coughs> All right? It turns out in order to solve this problem, the easiest axis to pick is not the center of mass. It's the edge that's touching the ramp. Here's why that's the easiest. Oh, why, why would that be the easiest axis to pick? Why is any axis any easier than any other axis? Because you get to get rid of forces that way. Right? You remember that from static equilibrium? Yeah, you want to pick the axis that gets rid of the most forces. So it turns out, picking the axis along the edge is the easiest way. And the way you do that is... You pick the axis along the edge, and you figure out the moment of inertia along the edge. What's the moment of inertia along the edge? If this thing has a moment of inertia of I about its center of mass, what's its moment of inertia about its edge? I plus mr squared. Done. Got it? All right. So this thing has a moment of inertia of I plus mr squared about its edge. Oh. If we're going to do torque equals I alpha, what's the torque on this thing? Is there any forces acting on this? Yes. Gravity. gravity. Which way does gravity pull? Down. Down. Pull straight down. Is there an angle in there? Yes. yes. It is this little angle right here. That looks like an acute angle. Guess what? So is this one. They're both cute. So, um, so how do you get the torque due to gravity? If this is your axis, you do mg sine theta times r. Done. Remember that gravitational torque. So, torque is r mg sine theta. I is I, and alpha. If you think about it is A over R, where A is how quickly it's going to accelerate, which is what we were trying to find in the first place, right? So we're trying to solve for A. So A equals R squared mg sine theta over I. Done. Wait. No, we're not. We need the total I, which is I of the object plus mR squared. Okay, so the final answer is it's going to accelerate at R squared mg sine theta over I of the object plus mR squared. Got it? Cool. This actually works for hoops, discs, balls, whatever. Yeah, you just plug in whatever I value you need for the object. So that was pretty simple. Um, here's, I actually did the math, the amount of time it's going to take to get to the bottom. Um, for the hoop, I used uh, mr squared, and for the disc is one half mr squared. Uh, what's the ratio of the amount of time it's going to take? Which one's going to get there faster? In less time. The disc is going to get there. Disc will get there in square root of 3, whereas hoop will get there in square root of 4. Cool? So yeah. It's not a huge difference. You would expect kind of a bigger difference based on the fact that the hoop has twice the moment of inertia of the disc, but it doesn't actually take twice as long. It's just a little bit longer. All right, cool. Uh, let's do this the hard way. For the people who looked at this problem and said, hey, I can figure that out, let's have it rotate about the center of mass. It can be done. Here it is. How many forces are on that disc or hoop? Three. Hmm. <laughs> Three. Three. What are they? Gravity pulls down. Friction is acting right here on the edge. And normal force. So, if you choose your axis of rotation about the center of the object, which of these forces matters for torque? 
friction. The friction is the only one that matters for torque. So the torque due to the friction would be R times F times sine theta, right? But theta is 90 degrees, so it's just RF. So the torque equation is actually really simple. It's just FR, FR equals I alpha, and alpha is A over R. Good? So friction would be I A over R squared. Good so far? But that doesn't give you enough information to solve for A because you don't know the friction force. Okay, so in order to get the friction force, we actually have to use the down the ramp direction. So we're going to call that x is down the ramp. So sum of forces in the x direction equals ma in the dire x direction. How many forces are in the x direction? Two. Two. What are they? The weight. The weight, sort of. The weight and, you didn't just say weight and gravity, did you? Yeah, that's what you said. Okay. In the x direction, how many forces are there? Two. Two. What are they? Weight. The component of the weight in the x direction, which would be mg, is it cosine or theta? Sine. mg sine theta and friction. So mg sine theta is positive, friction is negative. So we got mg sine theta minus friction equals ma in the x direction. Uh, we got to solve, oh, sorry, we can plug in friction from over here. So mg sine theta minus Ia over R squared equals ma. Solve for A. Good. Do all that, and you end up with, guess what? The exact same thing as before. All right, r squared mg sine theta over mr squared plus i of the object. And once again, you get the same equations. Good? All right, so here's the key for any time you have rolling, rolling down a ramp, I would choose the axis of rotation about the point of contact with the surface. It will save you a major amount of algebra if you do. All right? Yeah. Ah, that's a good question. Where was the axis of rotation? Yep. Friction is still here. Right? That's still friction but it's at the axis of rotation. So I suppose if you wanted to write an x force balance and a y, an x and a y equation, you could, but there's no point. Yeah? Do we also consider the normal force to come out from the center of mass? Oh, oh yeah. Is there a normal force on this guy? Yeah. Sorry, the normal force actually acts at that point, right? Why don't we include it? it's acting directly away from the axis of rotation. So both the friction force and the normal force cancel out with this method. So you only have to worry about one force, which is mg sine theta. Good? All right. OK, let's go to the end. Uh, race between a hoop, a disc, solid sphere, hollow sphere, skateboard, and a hovercraft. Will, what will the place order be? All right. Hoop, hollow sphere, disc, solid sphere, hovercraft, and then skateboard is somewhere in here. Why is skateboard somewhere in here? In between these two. Because it's close to a hovercraft, but it's not exactly because it's got some. Yeah, it's almost a hovercraft, but it does have a tiny little bit of its mass that has to spin up. All right, we good? So they're in the order of decreased system of moment of inertia. Oops. And, oh, who's going the fastest at the bottom? Who's going the fastest when they get to the bottom? The hovercraft. The hovercraft. It got there first. 
there's constant acceleration. It's going the fastest when it got get to the bottom, right? Yeah, this is not one of those trick questions where you have a, you know, the, the different colored ramps in the marbles, right? Oh, interesting question. Which will get to the bottom quicker? A rolling object or a frictionless puck? Why the frictionless puck? Yes! The frictionless puck doesn't have to waste any of its energy starting to rotate. Does that make sense? And that's going to be the big deal over the next couple days. All right, that's all I have for you. Uh, get your homework done.